What is up, YouTube? I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci, and you're watching Da Vinci Reacts. Now, of course, the community is still, I'm still working on the name. I'm about to take a bunch of the names that were commented to me, and I'm going to put it on a poll on my Twitter account. So if you want to go ahead and vote for what the name of the Da Vinci community is going to be called, then be sure to check out my Twitter. That is Devon underscore Da Vinci, um, spelled the exact same way my channel is. Uh, it'll take you to my um, Twitter page and everything, and it'll have a poll that you can vote on to let me know what your uh, favorite name is. There's a lot of names that were put together, so some of them might not make the uh, poll, but you know, hopefully the ones that you guys like will be there, and the best name will get picked. <laughs> hopefully I don't get no like troll votes or anything like that. But um, anyway, this was a video that was requested uh, actually a while ago. Um, let me see if I can get the name of the person. This video was requested by Andreas Belovs or Andreas Belovs. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, this is your video that you requested. This is Ricky Gervais, the Golden Globe compilation. Now, the one that I saw initially was uh, too long for what I could record. So I went ahead and clicked on this. This is the best of Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes between 2010 and 2012. I hope that works. If he had any other videos uh, from any other years, I can go ahead and check those out. Or if there's something specific you want me to check out, then you know, leave a comment and I'll go ahead and check it out. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Just a quick note. I didn't have a good first impression of Ricky Gervais. My first impressions of him were actually from the Grand Theft Auto 4 game. I was a much bigger fan of Cat Williams at the time, so whenever I went to like the comedy club and it was uh, Ricky Gervais, I would like immediately leave and try to go back in to try to see Cat Williams. So this is my first time actually sitting down and seriously listening to his comedy, so just know that. Anyway, let's go ahead and check it out. And now, your host for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. Hello, and hello, and welcome to the 67th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais, um, thank you. It's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking. Or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. <laughs> Somebody in the crowd's like, oh yeah! serious now, <laughs> just looking at all the faces here, must be Rick Flair. some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, yeah. Shots fired. look great. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. <laughs> so, is it? It's four. It's four. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. <laughs> <laughs> the Golden Globes are to the Oscars what Kim Kardashian is to Kate Middleton, basically. Damn. What? Well, bit louder, bit trashier, <laughs> bit drunker, and more easily bought. Um, <laughs> allegedly, nothing's been proved. But it was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron, Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, mm. I, I feel bad about that, Shots Joe. fired at that movie. I, no, no, I'll tell you what. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, <laughs> it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, OK? <laughs> and I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going around but the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... <laughs> no. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? <laughs> Do you want to go and see Cher? No. <laughs> Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> Please welcome the man who will wear literally anything Tim Burton tells him to, Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is Johnny Depp's chance to get revenge for the uh, video, the, the jokes he did in the earlier years. Just for, I want to ask you a question. It's real. You can have some. Just checking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and be honest. What? Are you on recreational drugs? I'm joking. No, that's not the question. <laughs> and we all know the answer. Um, <laughs> it's all you know the answer. Have you? Ready? I guess so. Have you seen the tourist yet? <laughs> No. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs> oh, boy, he's fun. Also not nominated, he's fun. I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist, then. Um, Woo! Shots fired. Probably. No, don't, no, don't, no, no need for My names. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. No need for names. <coughs> They're not here. I love Eddie Murphy. He loves dress up, doesn't he? Um, versatile. He's versatile. No, he is. Bit of trivia for you, actually. Eddie Murphy and Adam Sandler, between them, played all the parts in the movie The Help. Isn't that brilliant? Damn. They were brilliant. I can't Ooh. believe they're not here. Or maybe they are. They're masters of disguise. They could be. <clears throat> There's been some great new TV drama this year, like Boardwalk Empire and The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah. Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Mm. Um, Damn. You know what's funny? Because I can tell what he's implying, but he's not saying it. He just, like, uh, leaves it there and just lets you continue the joke. That's funny. Don't worry. <laughs> Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> 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 oh. You're wrong for that. Thank you. Let's get on with it before NBC replaced me with Jay Leno. Uh, <laughs> our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mal Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, <laughs> Please welcome Scarlett Johansson. Oh, he done he messed up now. You done messed up, Rikaiki. You done messed up, Rikaiki. How you doing, all right? Cheers. Um, I've had a couple. I'm not going to lie to you. Now listen up. Um, I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean, it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said, it's, <laughs> honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. <laughs> Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Hollywood Foreign Press have warned me that if I insult any of you or any of them or offend any viewers or cause any controversy whatsoever, they'll definitely invite me back next year as well. <laughs> They actually gave me a list of rules. I'm That's going to ignore funny, them, but I thought it would be good to read them out, OK? This is real, OK? No profanity. That's fine. I've got a huge vocabulary. No nudity. See, that's a shame, because I've got a huge... <laughs> ...vocabulary. Um, but a tiny penis. No, no, it's true. Doesn't matter. I don't care. It works. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. I don't... I don't... No smut or innuendo, and I'm not to libel anyone, <laughs> and I mustn't mention Mel Gibson this year. Uh, not his private life, his politics, his recent films, and especially not Jodie Foster's Beaver. Um, I haven't seen it myself. <laughs> uh, She's like, it's wonderful. <laughs> I've spoken to a lot of guys here, they haven't seen it either. But I had a guy who tried to shoot the president over. It's, it's wonderful. 
the, uh, we'll the pause. next I'm going to go back a little bit. I missed a little bit of what he said right there. I've spoken to a lot of guys here. They haven't seen it either. But that doesn't mean it's not any good. Damn. The, uh, the next category contains a couple of legends, one of which we've already seen, Sir Paul McCartney. Fellow Brit, so good luck to him. I should be biased, but uh, we actually came over on the same flight. I didn't get to speak to him because I was up the front in um, first class and he was behind me in coach. Um, Damn. Saving money. <laughs> he spent an awful lot last year. I guess that's a joke at Paul McCartney being cheap. Go back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have to feel too sorry for him. He's doing all right. Oh, the thing. The creator of Facebook, of course, Mark Zuckerberg, is reportedly worth seven billion dollars. Heather Mills calls him the one that got away. Other celebrity scandal. Justin Bieber nearly had to take a paternity test. <laughs> what a waste of a test that would have been. <laughs> no, he's not the father. The only way that he could have impregnated a girl was if he'd borrowed one of Martha Stewart's old turkey basters. <laughs> Open wide. Um, the serious bit now. Um, the Golden Globes is shown all over the world. It is oblivious to colour or creed. It doesn't just celebrate talent, it celebrates difference. It crushes prejudice and stereotype. One stereotype I hate is that all Irishmen are just drunk, sweary hellraisers. Please welcome Colin Farrell. <laughs> Please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. But actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over because they're recognizable. You can be anywhere, you could be in the third world, okay, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star and it makes you feel better, okay? You could be a little a little child, a little Asian child, with no <laughs> possessions and no money. But you get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie and you think, oh, Mummy! <laughs> Next up, Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, One second. I'm going I'm to go back. I'm going to go back. Help him off the introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, <laughs> it was messy. Please welcome <laughs> Eva Longoria. OK, our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. Is, <laughs> she's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue. She's a material girl. And she's just like a virgin. Please welcome Madonna. <laughs> I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man. Two girls and a guy. Wonder Boys. Sorry, are these porn films. <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger, really? <laughs> yeah. Up the Academy, come on. <laughs> this whole time, Robert Downey Jr. has been picking movie roles just based on how close the title is to a porn. <laughs> he wants to be able to put it so bad. <laughs> he has done all those Iron films, Man? but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome God Robert damn. Downey Jr. I can't wait to introduce our next presenters. It's Salma Hayek and Antonio Bandera, so you can see why I'm excited. I've loved their work for many years, and I just got to talk to them for the first time, so I'm made up. Um, they're ridiculously gorgeous specimens. They're extremely talented, and probably very interesting. I'm not sure, because <laughs> I can't... Please welcome Salma Hayek and Antonio Banderas. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, <laughs> who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. 
He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome <laughs> the wonderful <laughs> Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. <laughs> the ungrateful. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> nearly there, nearly there. Um, it's so good having a job where you can get drunk and say what you want. It's like, and they still pay you. It's just amazing for me. Um, our next presenter is British, like me. But unlike me, he's won an Oscar. Um, <laughs> for his brilliant portrayal in The King's Speech. He's also swooned over by women. I don't see it. I don't get it. But good luck to him. Um, he's also loved by the critics. Oh, good for him. <laughs> but <clears throat> what you don't know about him is he's very racist. Damn. Very. <laughs> In private, I mean, really nasty stuff. He also, I've seen him punch a little blind kitten. <laughs> Please welcome the evil Colin Firth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer, and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances, starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13 and saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, our next presenter won both the Golden Globe and the Oscar for her brilliant performance in Black Swan. This year, she took some time out to have a baby. Consequently, she's been nominated for nothing. <laughs> but really pathetic. <laughs> But she's learned that valuable lesson that all you already knew. Never put family first. <laughs> Please welcome the very foolish Natalie Portman. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's about it. Um, well done. Justice there. Thanks, everyone in the room, for being good sports. Thanks to NBC. Thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press. Um, thank you for watching at home, and thank you to God for making me an atheist. <laughs> 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 uh, that was funny. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed the hell out of that. I'm gonna have to go ahead and check out more of his um, stand ups. Uh, if you guys have any specific skit that you want me to check out, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go look through my comment section and see if anybody has uh, already recommended a specific skit from uh, Ricky Gervais. Uh, if not, then uh, be sure to leave something in the comment section down below. I want to check out more of his uh, stand up. And. Anyway, that has been this video. I can't really add too much because, I mean, the dude was just wild. He was going a lot more vicious than what some people probably would. <laughs> Especially in a room like that with all those, like, higher-ups in Hollywood and everything. And I'm sure Ricky Gervais still wants a job. So it's it's kind of like cracking jokes on your boss. <laughs> and he's and he's like, okay, well, just lay it in on me. Just, just lay it in. And you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's been my reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. I'll check out more of Ricky Gervais soon. And I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci. I hope to see you guys on my next video. Deuces.